so what's going on in problem B? So we have this combination lock that they've helpfully drawn for us. Uh, and to unlock it, we have to rotate the wheel n times. Uh, n is up to 15. And we know the number of degrees that we want to rotate each time. But we don't know whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. And also, we want to know that we get back to zero at the end. Uh, so we have to figure out if there's a way of doing the rotations, either clockwise or counterclockwise, such that we get back to zero. Um, so that's the problem. So how do we do it? Uh, so the idea is that there's only 15 different numbers. Um, so you can think of it as just adding up 15 numbers, positive or negative, it's the number of degrees. Uh, and the point is that a counterclockwise and a clockwise rotation cancel out just like a positive and a negative number. Um, the only other thing is that you can wrap around back to 360, which is zero. So we need to remember that. Um, but the point is we just need to decide whether each number is positive or negative. How do we do that? Uh, well, we can just try all possibilities for each, each number being positive or negative. There's only 15 numbers. There's only two choices for each number, positive or negative. So there's only two to the 15 uh, possible ways to do that. And two to the 15 is not that big. It's about 32,000. So it's fine to just try them all. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. So first read in n, then read in the uh, degrees. And then we're going to try all uh, settings of the sign. So this is a nice, nice tricky line. So what does this line do? So let's say we had n equals 2. Then 1 less than equal to n. Uh, this is just n. So we have one zero zero. And the binary is four. Uh, so. A goes through 0. So we're going to think of A as a 2-bit um, binary number, if n equals 2. And it goes through these states. And those are exactly the four you know, possible on-off switches. So the point is, this is a way to get A to go through all of the possible like n-bit numbers, which we're going to interpret as flags, uh, all the way from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, which is the uh, biggest number less than this. Note that we want less, not less than equal to, because we want to go through all the n-bit numbers. Uh, so anyway, given that particular choice of signs, we're going to compute the sum. So go through all the bits. Uh, if the corresponding bit in A is 1 or 0, then add positive or negative. So let's talk about how this bit set function works. So it takes a bit set, and it takes an index, and it's supposed to tell you if the corresponding uh, bit is 1 or 0. So this is grabbing a zero index, so grabbing this middle bit and this middle bit and returning them. Um, so how does that work? So we right shift our set by the index, so that deletes everything that we don't, all the early stuff that we don't care about. Uh, we and it with one, so that isolates the last bit, so that deletes all the later stuff we don't care about. And then we just check if that's equal 1. Um, so yeah, that's how that works. OK, so we checked if our uh, 
choice of signs is 1 or 0 for this particular number. Uh, if it's 1, then we add it positive. If it's 0, then we add it negative. Um, now we have another tricky line. So this uh, takes this sum mod 360, but the positive mod 360. Right, so mod, uh, like a negative number of mod something, typically returns a negative number. Uh, but it's at least a negative number between um, 0 and negative the mod. So if you, this is a way to get like the positive uh, mod is first you mod to make the number small, then you add the mod to make the number non-negative, and then you mod again to get the um, the actual mod. Now the reason you need to mod again is because if the number was positive in the first place, then you just moved it out of range. So this will give you a number between zero and the mod um, for any number, negative or positive. Uh, in this case, um, a negative mod something there's no negative zero in the integers, so we don't actually need this, but whatever. So anyway, if the sum was zero, then we say, okay, this was a valid setting, and we're just gonna check all possible settings, uh, starting, so this is initially false. If any setting works, then it will become true, and then we will just print out the answer. So that's this problem.